Hey folks, Kosti here, and today I'm going to be recording a public service announcement uh, because, frankly, I'm a little bit concerned about what I'm seeing out there on uh, the chess Twitter and Reddit and Discord um, because what I'm seeing is that too many players are overemphasizing or at least relying way too much on chess engines and what chess engines think about uh, some given position. And I think it's gotten so bad, it's almost at the point where these players, I think, are actually negatively impacting their own chess understanding and the chess understanding of those around them. Now, I personally like chess engines. If they're used properly, I think they can be a really helpful tool. Um, but from what I've seen, there are so many players out there that are really just misusing and misinterpreting what the engine is telling them. So that's why I'm making this video today, not to uh, berate anyone, but rather to educate folks on some of the limitations and dangers of relying on the engine a little bit too much. Now, by the way, I'm not even talking about those people who watch high level chess with the engine on and they question how could the players like miss all these different moves. We all know those people are totally ridiculous and that's not good for your improvement because you're not finding any good moves yourself and you're not even looking at the position and thinking about it with your own brain. You're just watching the eval bar <laughs> to see if it goes up and down. So I think we can all agree that that is not a great use of engines. But instead today, I'm actually talking about the well-intentioned improvers who use the engine in order to kind of aid their studying. And hopefully I'll show some of the typical ways that people tend to often misuse or misinterpret the engine's output. So first things first, the engine should not be treated like some kind of oracle or like it's always giving the objectively best or correct move in the position. The engine is just calculating a bunch of moves and then giving you an evaluation. Even the world's top engines will get stuff wrong and misjudge positions all the time. And let's be honest, you're not using the world's top engines. You're using Stockfish on your phone or your browser most of the time, which goes up to a depth of like 20 or 25 and is really honestly not that strong. So your random engine on your browser or your phone is really going to be giving you the objective truth of a position. Now let's just take this position as an example. Here I would like to play the move b2 to b4, but currently it's not possible because black can just take it, taking advantage of the fact that the rook on a1 is uh, undefended. So you might get some random engine here telling you that the best move is rook a2 with an evaluation of 0.6, threatening the move b4. And the second best move is rook to d1 with an evaluation of 0.45 for white. So does that mean that rook a2 is objectively a stronger move than rook to d1? Absolutely not. It's just the one opinion of this one engine. If you let it run longer, it might change its mind. If you give the position to a different engine, it might give you a different evaluation. If you give the position to a stronger computer, it might give you a completely different move altogether. The point is the engine is just doing a calculation and giving you it's an evaluation. It's an opinion more than anything else, and it should not be treated as some kind of objective truth. But unfortunately, sometimes you get a game report from some of the online sites where you play the move rook to d1, it says dubious, best was rook a2 x clam, and you're uh, left sitting there kind of scratching your head wondering, huh, I guess I should have seen this move rook a2, and then trying to justify it logically. Where I would say that's the kind of note or analysis that I would pretty much just advise you to ignore and move on to the rest of the game. Engines are great for spotting tactics, missed opportunities, missed mates, and things like that. But when it comes to like positional stuff and developing your pieces, especially in the opening, I really wouldn't be putting a lot of faith into these low level, low depth engines. So here we have another typical example that I'll often see um, as a question either on Twitter or Reddit or sometimes on, on Discord um, where someone will present this position and say, you know, hey, I had this as a puzzle and my solution was uh, bishop takes h7 check and then I calculated that if king takes h7, knight g5, if king to g8, white has queen h5 and it looks like white has a winning attack. And if king g6, I thought white would play queen to g4 and it looks like white has a winning attack. And it, it turns out I got the puzzle right, but then I checked the position with an engine, and the engine was saying that after bishop takes h7 check, black's best move was king to h8, which I totally didn't consider. And then the question is like, so did I get the puzzle wrong, or is the solution wrong? You know, why didn't it include this critical defense king h8? And I think the, the confusion here, the, the misunderstanding is that, well, king h8 is definitely not a critical defense. Even if the engine thinks it's a better try than king takes h7, the point is that the engine, of course, can already calculate that king takes h7 is leading to checkmate, 
and it tries to survive a little bit longer with king to h8. But is king to h8 a critical defense? Well, absolutely not, right? What's going on here? The puzzle is over. You grab the pawn, <laughs> you can pull the bishop back. There's nothing else to calculate. There's no sacrifice that white made, no investment. There absolutely zero risk for white to be worse or lose the game here. So there's nothing really challenging or critical about this defense. And that's why in you know a lot of puzzle books, they're not really going to mention a move like uh, king to h8, because it's just not really relevant to the real puzzle. The real puzzle is, can you justify the peace sacrifice after bishop takes h7, king takes h7? Can you calculate far enough to make this work? You know, can you find this move queen to g4 and correctly evaluate that white's chances here are good? Or maybe you saw even further and you saw that black, you know, has no good defense, the knight takes e6, uh, winning material, and, and so on. So this is the danger when you check puzzles with the engine. Sometimes the engine is going to give you something that looks like a better defense, but is in no way a more human or more critical or more relevant defense. And that's something that is really kind of up to your own human judgment to figure out. But if you do have a question on a particular puzzle, I think the best thing to do apart from asking the engine, if you, that doesn't quite help you figure it out, is to post the puzzle somewhere, ask for feedback, and then others can help you understand it. Now here we have a couple real world examples of folks misinterpreting uh, the engine. Uh, the first one comes from Neil Bruce, who is a big friend of the dojo, actually shout out to Neil. He's an incredibly hardworking uh, adult improver. We actually did a great interview with him for Dojo Talks, our podcast, uh, where he talked about how to find time and motivation as an adult improver. That's a really, really awesome uh, interview. I'll link that uh, in the description below if you guys want to check it out. It's also available um, on all the major uh, podcast platforms. Um, but Neil makes a lot of posts and uh, as hardworking as he is, sometimes he does get stuff wrong. And this was, let's say, a pretty uh, classic example of him not really quite understanding what the engine was telling him. So Neil posted this uh, position. This comes from the game uh, Tal Spassky in Tilburg 1980. And he writes, a good example where the player found a good move, but the computer finds a great move. And what's White's best continuation? Uh, and then he posted the diagram here. So let me put this position on the board and then we'll take a look at it. Okay, so here's the game Tal Spassky that uh, Neil posted. And as you remember, his caption was, White found a good move, but the computer finds a great move. So let me show you guys what happened and what Neil classifies as uh, a good move. Um, okay, so Tal played knight takes h5. So sacrificing his knight on h5, Spassky took, he played rook f5 hitting the queen, black played queen to e8, and now he continues the attack with e5. Um, so full peace sacrifice, now e5, opening up the bishop on c2, and Tal goes on to win in uh, brilliant style. Uh, black plays d takes c5, White goes bishop h6, black plays rook a6 to defend along uh, the 6th rank because white was threatening to take on g7 and bring the queen in and just have a devastating attack. Here white plays bishop takes g7, king takes g7, and now d6, cutting off the rook uh, along the 6th rank. Um, now the threat is uh, queen g5 check as well as rook g5, so black plays f6. Um, and here, Tall finds the only winning move in the position, otherwise white would actually just be much worse and down a piece, rook g5 check. So really, really brilliant resource. The point here is that after f takes g5, queen takes g5, black is actually getting mated because uh, the king uh, just has nowhere to run, queen and bishop are too strong here, so king h8, queen h6, and mate next move. And so here we can see actually the point of Tall's previous move e5, which was to open up the bishop. If we just quickly drop back to this point, e5, another very, very strong move, opening up the bishop in order to make this attack work. Um, because had white played bishop h6 or something here, then black could go f6, it would actually be defending the position. So e5, really strong move, then he goes bishop h6, and black just has no defense to the attack. If f6 here, very importantly, white has the same resource, takes, takes, and just the absolutely brilliant rook g5 check, or either black takes and is getting mated, or if black doesn't take, for example, king to h8, I think white has a lot of moves, rook g3 is pretty crazy here, uh, and just totally devastating, with queen h6 to follow, and yeah, black just has no defense to mate. So in the game, tall play knight takes h5, and won brilliantly, um, but as Neil points out on Twitter, the engine shows knight f5, 
with essentially the same idea, g takes f5, rook takes f5, it's just the same position, was stronger. So why is knight f5 stronger? Well, let's go back to Neil's post. Here Neil writes that the lines should not transpose between knight uh, f5 and knight takes h5. They only did, Neil writes, because after knight takes h5, black blundered on the next move with g takes h5 instead of the much superior 1f6. So instead of playing 1f6, which would have been the better defense. And then uh, included in Neil's screenshot is his stockfish, which shows f6 here as uh, the number one move. Depth 18, that's very low. Neil, you should know better. Really, really low depth stockfish. But okay, let's take a look and go back to the board. So as you saw, Neil's point was that if knight takes h5, which was played in the game, black here could still have played f6. So the difference is that if white starts with knight f5, f6 doesn't work. White will play bishop f4 with tempo, the queen has to move, and then white has knight takes d6, knight takes g7. This is just totally crushing. So this is why the engine pinpoints knight f5 as being a great move or more accurate or whatever. But let's take a look. After knight takes h5, if gh, then the two moves are exactly identical. Doesn't matter whether we play knight f5 or knight h5. So the only difference is this uh, pesky move f6. But Spassky didn't play this move, and, and why would he? Let's just take a look at the line that the engine shows. So after f6, the bishop is hanging, knight on h5 is still hanging, bishop f4 is not going to be played because of queen takes h5. So white's going to play knight takes g7, of course, the most forcing move in the position. If king takes, then bishop h6, white wins the exchange. Again, completely winning, that's not really playable for black. So black has to go queen takes g5, again, only move according to the engine. Then white has the simple queen takes g5, trading queens f takes g5, white plays knight e6. Rook on f8 is now under attack. If the rook moves out of the way, rook f7 is coming and white is just completely crushing. So black is once again forced. Again, only move, rook takes f3. Then let's say white recaptures g takes f3 just to strengthen the center and open up the g file. So by force, we're left with this endgame. So this is the so-called defense that black had where it turns out that white is now a pawn up Black has a number of weak pawns in the position. White has this dominant knight on e6. Black has a terrible bishop on b7. It's just like a completely winning position for white that Tall would win 10 times out of 10 against Spassky. So was is this a really, truly relevant defense? In my opinion, I don't think so. I think it's totally irrelevant. Of course, Black didn't want to go into this. There's just no upside for Black here. He's just down a pawn for nothing, and he's much worse. Whereas in the game, after knight takes h5, g takes h5, you know, maybe there's a chance here Black survives. Obviously, Spassky wouldn't go into this if he thought he's just getting mated, right? Then he would try to grovel with f6. But that's the point, is that chess is a game played between two humans. Yeah, the engine can calculate that Black is getting mated here, and so the engine is just going to just give the pawn and not put up any resistance whatsoever. But humans are different. Humans are going to fight back. They're going to accept your sacrifice, and you're going to have to prove it to them by calculating the full line out. So I thought it was pretty funny that, according to Neil, knight takes h5, eh, not so good. <laughs> but knight f5, yeah, that was that was the way to go. Whereas from a human point of view, if anything, knight takes h5, this was the more forcing way to uh, initiate the sacrifice. So hopefully I've made myself clear with this one. Here we have another example that I thought was kind of a good illustration of the problem. Uh, this comes from uh, Mr. Jim Jones on Twitter. Uh, really nice guy, part of the chess punks uh, community. I've only interacted with him a little bit online. Uh, again, super friendly, super uh, awesome person, but I think a little bit confused on the purpose and how to best use engines. Okay, so Jim Jones writes, it appears a text from How to Beat Your Dad, a uh, classic uh, chess book, uh, a lot of people like this one, um, was wrong on this example. A very nice concept for sure. But in the reference game, Karpov resigned after knight g3 check. The author surmises the inevitable rook h8 after two rook a8 continued. So let me actually bring up a board on this one. So this is actually a famous game, Karpov Taimanov. Taimanov was playing black here and yeah, forces resignation after the move knight to g3 check. Um, because uh, king has no moves, white has to take this one. If queen takes g3, then black goes rook takes uh, on b1 here and is just up in exchange and winning. And if white goes hg, um, then black's idea was to play this really fantastic move, rook a8, where white has no defense to the threat of rook h8 check, uh, which is actually mating because the king is stuck in the corner. So very, very nice uh, combo. And yeah, according uh, to, to the text, 
and to Jim, uh, yeah, black or white resigned after knight to g3, and then the author writes because hg rook a8 followed by rook h8 was winning, and I think this is definitely uh, correct. Uh, but Jim writes if we go to um, his second tweet, here is the correct continuation, and then uh, there's a gif here with a chess line, and it has knight g3 takes rook a8. And then just some random moves, queen f2, rook b4, and it's just some like weird computer uh, simulation. Um, and then he goes on to say it's actually better for white to capture with the queen on g3. Right, after, yeah, queen takes g3 maybe objectively better, but then black plays rook takes b1. And then there's another like computer simulation, I guess, to show um, what best play looks like, or uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. So yeah, a lot of confusion, I think, in this post. And then some people, you know, corrected him here. But so what was Jim trying to say? So Jim was trying to say that, you know, knight g3 check was played. And then after uh, hg, rook a8, you know, the author says rook h8 is the next move. But the engine gives queen f2 as some kind of defense. And in fact, queen takes f2 would be the next move. But like, yeah, this queen f2, not very relevant, right? It's just like white giving up a queen. We can see the idea from the engine's point of view, you know, stopping mate with rook h8, because now I would have king to g1 here. But from human point of view, this move is, of course, not relevant at all. Black plays queen takes f2 and is still completely winning. Now white can throw another Hail Mary with rook to b4, as is given in, in Jim's, you know, computer simulation line, because this also stops rook h8. It's no longer mate because of rook h4. But of course, black here is anyway totally winning. So this defense is really not relevant to, you know, what happened in the game. And certainly queen f2 is not the so-called correct uh, continuation. Now, um, the other point of this is also this question about uh, what happens if white takes with the queen. So again, objectively, queen takes g3 might be a better move mathematically. There's nothing to calculate here. The rook is hanging on b1. Black is going to take the rook. Now the bishop on f1 is hanging. This is a huge threat. Black can also take this b6 pawn. Black is just up in exchange and completely winning here, right? So there's there's really nothing uh, dramatic happening here, nothing really to calculate. Black is just winning. That's the end of the line. The critical line, of course, is what happens if white goes hg. Because if black doesn't have this incredible move rook a8 in mind, right, then black just gave up a knight for nothing. So, of course, black has to find this move to make the whole combination work. But then once black does find the move, then that's it, the game is over. I mean, yeah, rook h8 is black's next move. White can throw their pieces at black with queen f2 and rook b4, but it doesn't really change the main point of the combination. Well, right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, the point of today's video was not to attack or go after anybody, but rather to educate folks on some of the limitations and some of the dangers around using engines and how we can sometimes misinterpret what they're telling us. Remember, chess is a game played between two humans, which means a lot of the practical aspects really come into play more often than when two engines are playing each other. And it's not so much about the mathematical evaluation, but rather the ideas that you yourself can come up with. If you appreciated this video, please do give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. All right, hopefully you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.